So unless you've been living under a rock for the past few months, chances are that you've heard of ChatGPT. This AI-powered chatbot was developed and released by OpenAI last November at the end of 2022. Since then, it has amazed millions of users all over the world thanks to its ability to produce fairly believable human-like conversations and write a wide variety of texts, ranging from business speeches to movie scripts, essays, music, answers to test questions, code snippets and programs, and more. One of the most impressive feats of ChatGPT is its capacity to retain the context of the conversation that you're having with it, and evolve from prompt to prompt. This short-term memory, combined with the incredible amount of data that OpenAI trained the model on, gives really impressive results. And of course, since the beginning of 2023, countless projects have spawned here and there to try and leverage this technology, and build a whole set of applications on it. Among which, obviously, a lot of game-related projects, since this potential to generate endless stories, dialogues, scenes or entire worlds was not lost on the game developers and enthusiasts. Cause how great would it be to finally avoid the endless repeating NPC lines, or the totally unrealistic pre-scripted reactions? As a player, wouldn't it be nice to interact with characters that have a believable behavior and have a rational knowledge of the world that they're living in? Integrating ChatGPT-like deep learning models in our games could revolutionize the industry and create a new generation of artworks that offer us ever more immersive worlds. But if you're a bit familiar with AI and neural networks, you know that this tool is not a silver bullet that you can use blindly. So today, I want to discuss a bit to which extent a tool like ChatGPT can be used to power our games, and in particular, our game characters. Earlier this year, six researchers from Stanford University and Google collaborated on a paper that was called Generative Agents – Interactive Simulacra of Human Behavior. In this article, they explained how, using ChatGPT, they managed to implement and give life to a little fantasy town of 25 people in a sandbox environment similar to The Sims. Their goal was to use OpenAI's language model to give each of these characters a backstory and a basic overall objective but then have them live their life autonomously with no more than this little input and hopefully exhibit natural human-like behaviors. This resulted in pretty good AI-controlled agents that even had memory of past events, so they could react more appropriately during the next encounters. And yet, those agents weren't perfect. And in fact, as numerous articles have highlighted over the years, Deep learning presents a few notable issues if your plan is to use it in games. First of all, neural networks are, by their very nature, uncontrollable. And it's not just that you, as the common people, aren't knowledgeable enough to understand, it's that for one of the first times in human history, we've actually developed a tool that cannot be interpreted and reasoned with. Deep learning models like ChatGPT don't apply a step-by-step -step process, they simply spit out an answer that should work. And to be honest, it does work in a lot of cases, which further maintains the illusion. But at its core, a neural network is a big pack of buttons that have all been tweaked during a prior learning phase to transform most inputs into a somewhat valid answer. Still, we have no idea what these little factors mean on their own, and the entire process resembles more a lucky guess than a scientific algorithmic approach. You cannot ask an AI why it answered the way it did, or how it came up with that solution. Another big problem with blindly using AI in games is that machine learning relies entirely on data, and that this data may not be perfect. Indeed, one of the big ideas behind using machine learning for games is actually to free the developers from manually encoding behaviors and rules into the AI, and instead have the model learn those rules on its own. And the material the AI bases its learning on is the data that we give it, and that supposedly represents the world objectively enough for it to train properly. Except that objectivity is quite hard to achieve, and that as you probably know, data usually contains inherent biases. So since the AI only has this to eat and grow from, its brain will logically contain those biases too. In the context of a video game, this can be quite harmful, because it's typically the type of situation where you're tuned for entertainment, 
and not profound critical thinking. This unique mind frame can be interesting for gently teaching concepts. If you're curious about that, I've actually made a whole series about incidental learning and what video games can teach us. But it can also convey bad messages if you're not careful as a creator. And given that games are still primarily designed for children, relinquishing control and authoring on what our game characters say means potentially exposing kids to less than ideal dialogues. So will we need to add a new section to our game's age rating categories for AI-generated content, warning parents and children that we can't predict what's gonna happen? This also brings us to a third issue with trying to use neural networks like ChatGPT for games too quickly responsibility and ownership. Cause, think about it, if some AI-powered NPC suddenly tells you some horrible racist line and you're shocked as a player, who should you report it to, exactly, and who can you blame? Is it the fault of the game's developers for letting the AI train and come up with this idea? Or of the people who initially prepared the training data, which perhaps contain a big racist bias? Or of the machine itself, since it's the one that's ultimately produced the conversation? This is still unclear, and social networks and blogs have shown us that controlling content can be quite a big amount of work. So will there come a time where video game studios show a startup disclaimer, telling us that they are not responsible for the content of their own artwork? In a sense, this might actually be a necessary warning from the viewpoint of creators leveraging AI for the game, since ChatGPT has been known to suffer from hallucinations. Yep, despite its impressive results and its ability to sound like a human, the chatbot still has a major flow. It is prone to inventing completely incorrect or nonsensical answers from time to time and blending them in the rest of the conversation without as much as batting an eyelid. So it sounds correct and it reads correct, but it's actually completely false. Those inconsistencies and errors can already be hard to spot when discussing with the chatbot on OpenAI's website, but now what if it's embedded inside the game and told to you by a respectable NPC? Who's to say then that you won't take the idea as a fact and thus learn false info? Deep learning and large language models are advancing at a never-before-seen pace, but laws, ethics and policies are still lagging behind. Although numerous experts of the domain have called for a slowdown on the research of new ChatGPT-like technologies, it's clear that the tool is already out there, and that, as we speak, it's already being adapted and integrated into lots of projects as a foundational block. As always, when trying to tame a new technology, it's important to understand its limitations and collectively design some good practices and good ethics for using it. AI comes with its share of cautions, and as far as video games go, jumping on the wagon too fast might lead to unstable and undirected artworks that contain unwanted messages even the creators didn't expect. But AI also has the power to completely change the way we think about programming and games, and it's essential to start considering how to integrate it to our game dev's toolbox. So if you have ideas about AI or ChatGPT and how it's used in video games, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll just ask you to stay polite in all your discussions with the rest of the community. Thanks in advance. And on that note, I really hope you enjoyed this first video on AI and games. And if you did, don't hesitate to like it and subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks a lot for watching and take care.